Hello, and welcome to a bonus episode of the Physique Development Podcast. This show is a question and answer based show where we take questions we've been asked by our listeners and answer them through our industry experience as coaches and from our own personal and professional perspectives. But today we'll be doing things a little bit differently. The podcast is normally the three co owners, Alex, Austin, and Sue, but as a company, we have other coaches on staff. Today, I, Coach Sue, am joined by Maggie. Hey, Sue. You'll be hearing from Maggie getting to know who she is, and you'll quickly see why she is on staff for physique development. We will dive into her life, her background, and a topic she has chosen, and we still want this to be an educational-based podcast. So we'll be hearing a lot about what it's like to be a working mom and just more of her background as a whole. So without further ado, let's hear from Maggie. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about who you are? Okay. Okay. So first of all, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, A little bit about me. I am a registered dietitian and um, I have a bachelor's degree in public health and a master's degree in nutrition science. And I have been working in dietetics, specifically in weight management, since I literally became a dietitian in 2013, I think. Um, I unintentionally made a specialty of weight management. One of my first jobs out of college was working at a bariatrics facility. And part of the requirements to work there was actually to go to multiple conferences pertaining to weight management. So I had the opportunity to listen to literally experts in the field of weight management. And um, so naturally, my clientele just started coming from that knowledge. Um, Ever since working in bariatrics, I have... started working with my own clients. I currently work at an oncology clinic, which is completely different than anything I've ever done. Um, On a personal level, I'm married to an amazing man. His name is Zach. I have the world's cutest son. His name is Sloan. I can attest to this. He is very, very cute. (laughs) His name is Sloan. And uh, my favorite show is Grey's Anatomy. I named my son after Dr. Mark Sloan, simply because my husband would not let me name him Derek. (laughs) Um, I have two Irish setters. One is Bobby, also named after Bobby Flay, my favorite chef. And um, I have another dog, another Irish setter. His name is Sully. He's named after nobody. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So do you call Sloan, I mean, McSteamy sometimes? (laughs) That's no. the real question. That's going to be his nickname later on. So. We do watch Grey's, though. And every now and then when Sloan's on the TV, I'm like, baby, that's you. <laughs> that's your family. I absolutely <laughs> love it. And then you also teach as well. Yes, I do. I teach um, nutrition and healthy lifestyles at the University of Louisville. So I definitely have my hands full. And that is why my specialty is helping working moms. But we'll dive into more why, I'm sure. Yes. And with these podcast episodes, as we're having the different coaches on, we really want to highlight who they are as people as well as why we hired them. It's something where as we're growing the team, we're welcoming new people to the team. We're looking for a certain type of coach to have on board. And a big part of that is being able to have someone that aligns with physique development, who's going to be hardworking like all the other coaches on staff, as well as being able to help or fix a common problem. When it comes to coaching, we've been talking about this over the weekend. It's so rewarding to help someone and show them that fitness can work for them and what that looks like. And so a big thing, like she mentioned, is looking at working moms. So I want to dive into a little bit about kind of your your past, what got you so passionate about helping moms um, and what that looks like for you. So first of all, I didn't even know I wanted to be a mom for a very long time. I was very career driven and uh, passionate about just being a career woman. I grew up in a Muslim family. I can't speak for all Muslim families, but I can speak for my very traditional family. Women working is not a huge thing. My mom used to say I need to learn how to do housework and take care of my future husband. And I think I intentionally or unintentionally did the polar opposite of that. I am the world's worst homemaker. And um <laughs> But I think my mom's pretty proud of me now, though. Um, So I think with that, I became very driven in my career. And the thought of having children just didn't – it just didn't jive with me for the longest time. Um, But I am a big person, a big believer in going with your gut. And just one day I was like, you know what? I think I want a kid. I think I want to have a baby. And my husband um, looked at me like, what? (laughs) I I never thought I'd hear you say that. So um, anyways, prior to becoming a mom, I 
honestly, the struggles of being a parent and kind of what it's like to be a parent never occurred to me, um, especially being a person who is a dietitian who's like loves health and fitness, everything. So um, when I became a mom, when I was ready to lose the baby weight, I remember really, really struggling with my huge life shift, right? All of a sudden, when you become a parent, your time freedom doesn't exist. You know, you're now living for another person. Um, you can't just get into your car and go to the gym, right? You have an infant. You mm -hmm. can't bring them with you. Um, especially also now if you go to a gym that doesn't even offer child care at the same time. So I remember my maternity leave was eight weeks. I remember thinking I just want my pants to be able to fit, you know, when I go back to work, which my pants didn't fit. I wore maternity pants for like nine months postpartum. So I hope any mom who is listening who thinks they need to like snap back quickly realize like it's a struggle and it happens to the best of us as far as taking that time to feel like yourself again. Um but I do remember when I was trying to lose that baby weight and just trying to figure out how to navigate motherhood while working, while incorporating something I love, which is fitness. I remember trying to look for resources of somebody who could help me, right? So even though I am a dietitian and I am extremely knowledgeable in nutrition, I wasn't knowledgeable in execution of being a mom who works like, how do I do all this, right? Mm. It's hard. And what I found was absolutely nothing. There were only resources for women, for moms who were stay-at-home moms. Like, literally every single resource, whether it was a sleeping guide for your infant, a uh, exercise guide, um, any type of guide, it was geared towards those stay-at-home mom. And I was like, I know I am not the only working mom who is looking for this. And so um, that is where my specialty began because I knew there was a need. I knew that if I'm looking for this, somebody else is looking for this. Yeah, 100%. We were talking about this before we got onto the podcast. Of, that was something I absolutely loved that she was talking about when we had our initial interview, when we were talking through kind of what her life looked like, what fell into her passion, why she wanted to be a personal trainer, why she wanted to help others. And I think that it's, it's very easy for anyone to relate to the fact of being able to help something for yourself that you weren't able to find before as far as not knowing where that information was held or how that demographic of people went so long unhelped or uncared for in that realm. And I know for myself, when it became, when I became a personal trainer, it came from like this immense passion of no one taught me about food growing up. No one taught me how to eat. No one taught me the amounts I should eat. All that I ever heard was the food pyramid. So bread is what you should eat, but <laughs> oils are bad, which how am I supposed to eat bread without butter? I don't know, or oil. Um, and then also learning that um, the average American diet is 2,000 calories. And that was all I knew all through elementary school, middle school, high school, into college until I got into a specified nutrition course and not out of a requirement to take a specialized nutrition course or learn anything about my body, but because I was interested in figuring out what was going on or how to feed myself. I went years without understanding how do I feed myself because I just feel lost constantly. And food is a big part of our culture as well as our day-to-day -day life. As much as we obviously don't want it to overcome our whole life, it is a big part of our life. And it became something that each time I sat down to eat, I was just so confused. And it just came from this passion of like, why has no one told me how to eat? Right. And like how many other people don't know how to eat? And it's so cool hearing about your story of like, I have grown up and my mom did stay home and was home for us. But since then, all I've seen is working moms. And I've become more and more aware of what it looks like as far as how women are treated within the workforce, within day-to-day -day life, within different gender roles. But it's also something, especially when I became perinatal certified, that I was like, there's not really anything out there to care for the actual mom There's or nothing. what's going on. I mean, and you're perinatal certified. So that goes into nobody even talked to me about my core. Mm -hmm. Nobody talked to me about what I should do. I went to my six-week six postpartum checkup and she just was like, okay, 
you're good to go. Um, and I even said, can I start exercising now? And and I remember going for my first run. And I mean, this is a little embarrassing, but I know somebody is going to relate to this. I, I remember peeing myself a little bit mm-hmm. on my run and nobody warned me. And to some, they may think, well, how did you not know better? I'd never done this before, Mm -hmm. right? I knew I was a runner before having a baby. And I was like, well, I want to do the thing I love. I want to run. So that was extremely humbling. And then the fact that running three miles made me nearly like keel over and vomit was, (laughs) you know, humbling to say the least, which is why I started looking for a resource. I was like, I want to do the things I love again. Yes, I wanted to fit into my pants, but I also... I wanted to do, like my husband and I, prior to becoming parents, we would go on gym dates. We we did this lifestyle together and I wanted to figure out how I could still do this thing. Mm-hmm. And so here we are. Yeah. And I, I absolutely love it. Again, we, we had talked about kind of what kind of clientele she wanted to take on and what that looked like. And she had even asked, like, is it okay if it's, it's working moms or if it's moms? And I was like, hell yeah, it is. <laughs> because there's moms that need help. And I see it day in and day out, even just from clients that come to me postpartum, where again, nobody told them throughout their pregnancy how they should train. No one told them after their pregnancy what they should do. They just came to me feeling bad because their body didn't look the same way it looked before. And that like breaks my heart, even as someone who like hasn't personally gone through it, which I'm sure it'll break my heart in a whole different way when I do go through it. But seeing these women who were telling me they're crying in the shower and they can't even vocalize to their husband how bad they feel and they can't even go to the gym because they feel guilty taking time for themselves. And they already feel like if they are a stay at home mom, like, will they have all of this free time, which is incorrect. You do not, but girl. <laughs> Yeah, (laughs) you have all of this quote unquote free time and they felt bad about wanting time for themselves on top of that. So I can literally only imagine the tip of what that feels like actually going through it, not having a resource, not having someone to turn to, and then not having your company or someone surrounding you supporting you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I also, um, let's throw in postpartum depression. I had postpartum depression and It was a whirlwind. It was a whirlwind, and I do want more children, but I do feel more prepared um, going into a second pregnancy. I also feel prepared because Mackenzie is my coach, and she already knows. Um, I'm like, girl, get ready because you're (laughs) going to be my coach throughout my pregnancy because I'm just hoping to have a better, a healthier second pregnancy. But I know so much more now, right? Um, And something I tell my current patients, whether they're weight loss um, clients or oncology patients, I always say, you don't know what you don't know until you need to know it. Because I'll ask, you know, do you have any questions? And they're like, well, I don't know yet. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, you'll go through it and then you'll know. You'll know what you need to ask me. And it's just a learning process. And now that I've gone through that process, I just like, I want to just share the wealth so nobody else has to go through that period of what the heck do I do? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So before we dive into a little bit more about working moms, as well as just what that looks like for her day to day life, I do want to ask you about kind of how you found physique development and how you decided as well as your experience since then. Because again, if you are listening to this, you might have heard or probably have heard the other um, episodes with some of the coaches and their physique development clients. And it's something that we're very passionate about. And we love being able to have someone go through the coaching experience with us, and then being able able to show up as a coach. It's such a cool experience, first of all, but it's also something where they get to see, okay, this is how we operate. This is how we want to provide for people. And then being able to bring them on board and then do that same thing is incredible from our perspective. But I do want to kind of hear from your perspective. I found Sue before I found physique development, like probably every single coach maybe (laughs) on this team. Um, But I knew, I've known of you uh, for years. Um, I found you through Gabby Mail um, because back when I was the campus dietitian at UofL, I was looking for content that my kids could find helpful because at the time I was just an adult woman, right? I couldn't relate to a college student. So I was looking for college tips and tricks. I found Gabby. Through Gabby, I found Sue. Um, and then just naturally I started following you on Instagram. I, I discovered physique development through your page and I just thought to myself, they're so intelligent. Like they have their stuff together, (laughs) your evidence-based science-based minds. And I really, really respected that, um, because I knew if I looked at your content, I was actually going to learn something that was backed by science. You weren't just another 
person online, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so when I was looking for some support, I knew I wanted, I, I, I told my husband, I was like, I wish I could find a me, right? Because again, even though I'm a dietitian, I can't hold myself accountable. It wasn't a lack of knowledge on my end. It was that accountability factor. Um, and I saw that physique development offered that evidence-based approach with the accountability that I needed. So I just inquired like any other person. <laughs> and um, and now it's just, I'm so excited to be here. Yes. And we are so freaking excited to have her on board. Um, so I do want to dive into a little bit more about her life, what that looks like for working with working moms, um, not only for this to have an educational piece talking about what it looks like to be a mom and being able to give some tips and tricks possibly, but then also for you guys to get to know her a little bit more. I mean, she is a phenomenal human being and it's been so great getting to know her more and more, um, learning new things about her. I mean, I had recently learned that she had followed me from all the way back in college, which I say all the way, it seems like forever ago, but it is not forever ago, but, um, it, it's, it's cool learning more about her, learning more about her life, getting to meet her family, um, and see how she truly fits in. And I just know that she is going to do so phenomenal as a physique development coach. And so I do want her to touch on her, her ex expertise and being able to talk on what that looks like for her ideal client and all the people that she is going to help. So um, I became a dietitian. I decided I wanted to be a dietitian when I was 18. Uh, My mom had a heart attack and um, that changed my life. Literally, it changed my life because it changed my, it chose my career for me. I actually thought I was going to be a health teacher. Um, And then I realized after she had her heart attack um, I wanted to be able to help people a little bit more specifically because I, I physically witnessed my mom get help, right? I saw doctors and pharmacists and dietitians help my mom and just help her do a complete 180 with her health. Um, when my mom had a heart attack, it was also discovered that her blood sugar was in the 400s, which is extremely high. So she discovered she was a type 2 diabetic. Um, prior to her heart attack and her uh, diabetes diagnosis, um, my mom noticed she she was just losing weight so rapidly without trying. She kept getting new pairs of glasses over and over again, which now I know, and you're nodding yes. sign you know, <laughs> um, that was those are signs of diabetes. Those are signs that she's actually urinating um, sugar, right? Mm-hmm. Because her blood sugar was so high and unintentionally losing weight when your blood sugar is so high is because she's not able to absorb that food she's eating, right? So um It all just happened. And now when I look back in that, my life, I mean, none of us knew, right? You saying you knew nothing about what to feed your body is so relatable because we didn't know either. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say coming from a a Middle Eastern family, most people think, oh, I thought Middle Eastern people eat so healthy. Well, we do, but we also eat large quantities of rice and pita bread. Mm -hmm. My mom makes the best homemade pita bread. And when you use pita bread as a utensil, (laughs) <laughs> for every meal. That's a great way to get diabetes. <laughs> so um, I went to the University of Louisville. I was in college at the time. U of L did not offer dietetics. So I just went ahead, finished my bachelor's degree, but I just, I found the nearest school that offered dietetics that I could still, still get in-state tuition for. We lived in Southern Indiana. So I was like, I guess I'll be going to IU. Um, I looked up what I needed to do to become a dietitian. And I, that's a, that's exactly what I did. I told you yesterday when I have a plan, I become laser focused and that is what I do. I execute. And um, so that's how it all started. Um, And then from there, I've just unintentionally become a specialist in weight management. And a large portion of my personal clients are weight management only. Um, Now that I've really honed in on my specialty, I predominantly help moms and it's got to be the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. Um, because I love helping moms feel extremely confident. I love helping moms learn that it's absolutely okay to be selfish. I always say being selfish is not a bad thing. Um, The word selfish is not a bad word. Uh, I always say because you can't pour from an empty cup, you're going to actually be able to give so much more if you take care of yourself. And so a lot of times I'm giving actual nutrition education, but I'm giving them those affirmations that they need to know that it's absolutely okay to do you. Um, 
And that's just, it's, it's extremely fulfilling. Now, I also mentioned I work at an oncology clinic, right? Um, so yes, I do work in cancer. Never thought I would work in cancer, but I do. And um, it was unintentional how it happened, but it happened. And I, I, that's also been an eye-opening experience as well because I feel like I've learned the value of life by working with my oncology client or patients, I should say, um, because out of all of the people I've ever worked with, they have got to be the most grateful, the most appreciative group of people. They want to do everything they can to fight their disease. I tell them to drink, you know, green juice for a month. They will. Nobody, I've never said that, but <laughs> but that's just, <laughs> <If> you were. <laughs> but that's their motivation because they want to live. Whereas, and then maybe you can relate to this, I'm not sure, but sometimes when I have weight management clients, they're kind of, they complain a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like, are you kidding me? I have to do this. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like, I really don't like water. Whereas my cancer patients are like, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. But they also have the best attitudes because I think they realize now like how short life is. Mm-hmm. I've ha- Like my, my oncology patients actually make me smile more than anything else. So um, yeah, that's a little bit yeah. about that. I absolutely love that. And I think that that is something, I mean, to touch on here is when it comes to your health, as you can hopefully tell, we both have a huge passion for health. And I've had countless conversations with Alex, with Austin, with multiple other people on staff, and then just basically anyone who will let me talk about it as far as what it means to value your health. When it comes down to it, I mean, Um, you might be listening to this and you might be a competitor or a potential competitor, or you just want to feel a little bit better, fit into your genes or whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, what matters is your health because that's literally all you have. And if you are not listening to your wellness, you're going to have to listen to your illness and you are going to have to answer that door. And as someone who has seen people in excessive illness and not have their health, it's about one of the saddest things that you can see. And all they want in that moment is health. Is health. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I want every day of my life so I don't get to that point. Yeah. And I'm like, where's my health at? Because that's all you have at the end of the day. 100%. I just, my patients have been so eye-opening for me. I had a patient with breast cancer and um, she hadn't, she had an appetite, but her ability to taste was gone because of her chemotherapy. Um, And she actually said, I'm so tired of all these people who are trying to lose weight. You know, in our diet culture, everybody's always trying to lose weight, always on a diet to some degree. She said, I tell you what, if I ever get my taste buds back, I'm going to be 400 pounds. I just want to (laughs) taste. And I was like, you know what? That's a good way to, it, it like really made my mind shift to realize, okay, there's more to life than just being on a diet, you oh, know, yeah. and, and then there's no shame in people who want to look a certain way and achieve that. There's nothing wrong with that. But how many of you probably know chronic dieters, mm-hmm. right? Somebody who's always trying to do something and they never do it. They're just always on quote unquote on a diet or their mindsets on a diet. If they're not physically on a diet yeah. or they're physically on a diet and a, a whole thing. Um, we definitely see it within, um, different people that come to us and obviously want to help educate as well as get them to their end goal. And definitely do not want to demonize wanting to lose weight by any means, but being able to recognize what that looks like at the core of it. Right. Um, I was listening to something the other day and it was talking about, um, like instead of just being like, oh, why is my sleep bad? Why is this bad? Why is this bad? It's like, go to the root of the issue. Are you actually taking a second to reflect on what you're doing on a day-to-day basis? Not just what foods you're putting in your mouth, but what words are coming out of your mouth? What thoughts are going into your head? Like, what are all of those things that you are doing? Are you actually thinking about the quality of food that you're eating, the sourcing of the food that that's coming from, and what that looks like for your health and how you're able to show up? Like you were talking about, if you can't pour from an empty cup. I mean, that's something that I have to remind myself time and time again, that me running myself into the ground just helps no one at all. Um, But it's also something where I have to check myself when it comes to, okay, am I eating foods that are nourishing me and not pushing me into the ground in the opposite direction? I want to look at the whole structure of what health is, what that means to me, what that means for how I can show up for my family, for my future family, and for everyone else who needs me in life. Um, And that's something that I've really appreciated the conversations we had just talking about 
health mm-hmm. and quality of life. Um, and a big thing that we've talked about is just talking about time freedom and financial freedom and what we want our life to be. If you can dream that dream, dream it because it it can happen. And there's a lot that has been really cool happening in both of our lives and some that neither of us would have expected a few years ago. Um, but it all comes from being able to be intentional within a day, being passionate about what we're doing, and then showing up for ourselves and our loved ones. And like, that's what it comes down to of being able to get to this point. And it's just really cool to see that of how different ways we went about it, but what we were able to get to. Um, and it's even cooler because I'm very passionate about having children in the future. It's something that I, my mom is like the best mom in the whole entire world. She's phenomenal. And like, it hurts me, like I said, to see moms come to me and be so broken and not know what to do. Mm-hmm. And so with, Maggie being able to be like, I want to work with moms. I want them to feel empowered. I want to affirm them. Like that whole picture of health also means a lot because it's not just, I'm going to get you the results and show you that. It's, hey, moms aren't appreciated enough. I'm going to talk towards that. I'm going to let you know I get it and I'm going to affirm that and then let you know how you can show up for yourself because each person's life is so vastly different um, for you to be able to be the best mom and be excited about being a mom and not feel like you're constantly fighting something um, or you have to give up on yourself in order to be a mom. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I I also wondered, and a lot of moms wonder as well, like, I want to become a mom. Does that mean I have to give up my career? Absolutely not. And that's why I still work in oncology. It's still why I'm a dietitian right now, because I love what I do. And I didn't want to have to choose between being a mom and being an awesome dietitian, you yeah. know? And I love that I've sort of figured it out. I'm not a perfect human by any means, but I definitely have a good groove going. And that's what I'm excited to do for other moms. Yeah. We're very excited for her to do that for other moms. So um, we can wrap this up and just kind of talk through a few other miscellaneous things here. So we already know your favorite TV show. What's your favorite drink? My favorite drink besides water would be coffee. (laughs) Besides water. (laughs) Um, What is your favorite thing to do with your husband and Sloan? Uh, My favorite thing to do with my husband, just my husband, no kid, would be to work out. Um, I love going on gym dates with my husband. Um, with my son, I love to snuggle and we say, let's get cozy. Um, every morning when I would get my son out of his bed, uh, we go sit on the couch, get under the covers of our couch. He usually has like his stuffed animal or a little garbage truck with him that he loves. And we like watch whatever he wants to watch on Disney plus and we get cozy and he's the sweetest in the morning. He's the cuddliest and it's my absolute favorite time of the day. That sounds phenomenal. What is your favorite, or you already said your favorite TV show. What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Um, I feel like those are always so hard to know a favorite. I want to say the name of it. It's Crazy <laughs> Stupid Love. It's such a good movie. With Steve Ryan Gosling. Yes. Ra- yes. That That's is a, a great fantastic movie. movie. That, that is a really good movie. Um, what would be like your deathbed meal or your your favorite meal? Mm. Any and all forms of macaroni and cheese followed by um, ice cream. Not necessarily together, but like those are my two those favorites. Two. Um, and I guess something else I should mention is that Maggie is a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Um, so just something else, especially it's something we want to be able to provide for all different kinds of diets and all different types of people when it comes to physique development. Like we talked about, we go from competitors to general lifestyle, working moms, everything in between, and then being able to have people that are aware of what it looks like within that type of diet and being able to show up for that. So is there anything you wanted to talk about as far as being vegetarian? Um, I, well, I guess I'm technically a pescatarian because somebody on Instagram corrected me, um, <laughs> but I, I don't honestly eat that much seafood because I'm allergic to shellfish. I was just about to say, you're allergic um, to Um, and some. I can, I rarely actually eat fish. We ate fish last night, but that's rare. Um, uh, but I made it my new year's resolution in 2010 to become a vegetarian. It's the only resolution I have ever made and stuck to. And, um, and it was simply because I was learning about how meat was mass processed in the U S and I was really grossed out by it. <laughs> and, um, I was just, I was learning a lot about nutrition at the time in college. And I just decided, you 
know what, I'm going to make, I'm going to do this thing. And um, it was a huge learning curve as far as learning what to cook, what to eat, where to get in my amino acids and all the things. And now I realize it's so easy. It's so doable. It's so tasty because in all fairness, I never really liked meat. I never liked the texture of chicken. I The chewiness always bothered me. So people always say, don't you miss it? And I'm like, not even a little bit. <laughs> not There's nothing I miss. Um, I love my food. I love like a vegetable forward diet. That's that's just my preference. Yeah. So anybody who wants to learn about it, you know, She's I'm here. your girl. <laughs> She's going to be teaching me more too as yeah, well. For sure. <laughs> um, well, is there anything else you want to say as we wrap up? Or I'm just going to have you tell everyone where they can find you. I would say um, for for my moms out there who are listening or anybody really, um, especially my planners, because I am not a planner. Um, I would say if you're a person or if you're a mom who is trying to lose the baby weight or just feel more confident, maybe eat better or whatever it is, I would say make a general plan. Um, make a general plan of how you plan to execute. How are you want to do this thing, right? How do you plan on making it realistic? Don't just say it, but actually jot it out, right? But then... Because if you are a parent, you know nothing will ever go as planned, period, you know? And so what you're going to do is rather than throwing in the towel and saying, screw this, I'll wait till next Monday, what you're going to do is just reevaluate and say, what's plan B? How can I re-execute this goal? Um, Because I feel like I have too many people who have like this screw it all or nothing mentality. And when you become a parent, you really just cannot be that way. And so that's probably my like words of wisdom for any moms or parents or people who are listening, like get rid of that all or nothing because it's just life is not like that. Yes. And what I'll say real quick on all or nothing first, shameless plug, there is an article on the website, um, physiquedevelopment.com that I myself wrote. So yeah, (laughs) shameless plug about the all or nothing mentality, but I will take a small tidbit from it. Um, The best way I ever learned to look at the all or nothing mentality is picture you're driving in a car and your car, a car, whatever you want to be driving in, and you get a flat tire. You don't get out of your car and you're like, well, that one's flat. Let me flatten the rest of them. If I have to get one new tire, let me get four more. No one would ever do that. That would be the most expensive decision that you made. Do not do that. (laughs) If you were thinking about doing it, don't do it. Um, But it's the same concept within food. Let's say you eat uh, something off plan or you eat something or you overeat. A lot of times I hear like, oh, why does it matter? Like, screw it. Let's go the other direction. But it doesn't need to be that. You're always one decision, one food choice, one something away from being back on track. And so instead of thinking I need to slash the tires, it's just let me reevaluate and keep going. It doesn't need to be the end of the world. I've screwed up. Everything sucks. I suck. It's okay. I got a flat tire. It's okay. We're going to fix the tire and we're going to keep going um, and not feel like we have to slash every other tire. So that was a really good shameless plug. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, I'm pretty smooth with them sometimes, (laughs) but I'll do another shameless plug. So we'll go ahead and have you tell them where you can they can find you on Instagram. Um, my Instagram name is Working Mom Nutrition, but I'm also going to be on the Physique Development Instagram page as well. Yes, you'll be able to find her from the link in the Physique Development bio, and you'll be able to inquire and select her as your coach. You'll also be able to do it from the Physique Development website as well. And then if you do want to reach out to her to see if they would be a good match, you can go ahead and say your email address. Maggi at physiquedevelopment.com. Perfect. So that is where you can find her. We are very, very excited to have her on staff and just to be able to help all the moms, all the people and keep changing the world. So thank you so much for being on the podcast and we'll see you next time. (laughs) I never know how to sign them (laughs) off. I just end them. It's perfect. End them like this. So (laughs) thank you.